Coming up, will Big Fire make us big happy? You're just going to have to watch and find out. From the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal Edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is episode 226 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is also brought to you by Disboards.com. If you're looking for even more information to help you plan your Universal Orlando vacation, head over to Disboards.com and join the discussion today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Universal Edition podcast. I am your host, Craig Williams, and joined along by my side is my co-host, Ryan, the Rhino Clavin. Hello. Hey, and Rhino, who was that music from that we had in our intro? It was Chris Brignola. Yeah, it was a, a, a very, very awesome submission. So I like the little universal touches in there. Me too. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Yeah, so uh, of course, uh, this all stemmed from how many weeks back? I need to know exactly. Oh, it might have been like two months at this point, I that, think. It's I, been a while. It was a while ago. When you figure out how many exact weeks it was, then I we can continue on. I am not going to. Okay, that's, well, you know what? I'd appreciate it if you could, but if you won't, then I also have to respect you for that. It's okay. It's all fine. Anyways, yeah, you know, months back, we, we put out the call. You know what? It's uh, We're kind of tired with our music. We're bored looking for a change over and it. yeah we're just we're just over it it's it's good but now that uh now that the disney world edition and disneyland edition podcasts are are now synchronous with each other uh universal we need to break out on our own we don't want to use the same theme music as they do so we want to we want to kind of mess around with everything a little bit and that's what we're doing so uh, we've gotten a lot of great submissions already i think like five or six and this was one of them uh i believe chris also did another one and then uh there's uh, we we talked about one of them uh, a couple weeks back um we have keith yeah yep yep we already we have one from keith too uh i think we got another message from another person who made one for us but i forgot to respond and now this is just plain embarrassing that i didn't respond to that message i don't don't know that i got that one i don't believe you got that message yeah because i have chris's i have keith's and i have brenton's yeah yeah brenton brenton yes brenton from australia uh, I don't want to give away Brenton's last name, but I might have the last time around, but I really enjoyed it. Did we just give away Chris's? I sure did. Yeah. Okay. Then I, I'm going to give away Brenton's because eventually we're going to play his theme too. Brenton uh, Mortelli. Well, Chris Brignoli, who did our intro, I, he it says in his thing, he has a thing, Briggs Backing Tracks channel on YouTube. Oh. I'm just going to say it because he did this for us. Yeah. So that's yeah. And, and I like it. And I like it a lot. And we're going to play, uh, we're not only going to play his, we're going to play the other ones that we submitted and. And then uh, we're gonna we're gonna figure out uh, which one we're gonna we're gonna use eventually one day here as more gets submitted. I I, I, I don't I, do I even want to get locked into one? I don't know if I can just choose one. But uh, mm. and, and we don't have enough like cutaway segments to go to that we can we can have a lot of them. So we're just gonna have to figure out how this goes along. This might we might end up becoming one of the most inconsistent shows in the world because we keep changing our theme music so often. <laughs> Keep you on your toes, bruh. <laughs> yeah, that's how we do it back in California at Endless Summer. Bruh. Bruh. Yeah, no, really fun. So we'll keep that new music coming for you. Uh, we we like th- the music changing. We like our pizzas certain ways. Yep. <laughs> Served with extra love mm-hmm. and care. That's why I had to bleep it out. It's It was love. But Rhino didn't want, uh, Rhino didn't want people to know how much of a softy he was there. Anywho, uh, also going along with it too, so everyone's been sending uh, the longer songs that would work perfect for the intro-outro segment too. Uh, I think I want to come up with a little theme music or something for when we go into our question section at the end of the yes. each episode. So for that, we're like kind of looking for like a 10-second stinger of sorts. We should do in the take. park music too. So when we have like our cutaways to in the park. Yeah. Oh, that, that's a good one too. So uh, if you, you know, even for the guys who already sent in some of the music and stuff, if you think that you should, uh, you could kind of like even mold them into ten second segments too. We might might use those as well too. So we're 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 ready to go crazy on this. I am. You are. 
And, mm-hmm. I, and everyone else at home is like, gosh, well, they just talk about Universal already. Nah. Nah. It's actually, we, this, this episode is to announce that we are skipping this episode. We're taking it off. Yeah. We came all the way to work just yeah. to tell you we're not working. Exactly. So it was good. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Uh, no, no. It's all, all joking aside with that, uh, we're very excited about this episode. I know it's been open for a couple weeks now, and uh, things have been crazy with the holidays and such, and just haven't had a chance to get over and check it out. But at the same time, uh, we're giving them a little bit of time to really get on their best behavior before we come and knock down the walls. And that's our review of Big Fire over at Universal City mm-hmm. Walk. Easily the most anticipated episode we've had in our entire careers. Mm-hmm. Like it's since the beginning, since the announcement of Big Fire, people have been like, "Will Big Fire make you guys big happy? Will he get that choo choo onion? Will he? <laughs> Unfortunately, he'll be very disappointed to find out it is still, in fact, the baked Alaska, <laughs> baked Alaska, not the choo choo onion." <laughs> 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 I think I should learn what that's actually called, but it's fine. Yeah, you really should. I, and now I'm like kind of second guessing myself. Did I edit that out of the episode? Oh because gosh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I might have because I didn't want you to be so embarrassed, but I think I left it. It's you usually leave embarrassing things in, so yeah. There's only one. I think I've left out two things in the recent past, and uh, this is because I'm not going to play them. One was during our. Endless summer joke. We made a very distasteful Johnny Johnny Depp joke, mm. and I believe we oh, left yeah, in the part. We left in the part with Johnny Depp and said it's like the Johnny Depp of the ocean or something. Oh, and so you kind of alluded. To yeah, it. It, well, you alluded to it, and then there was a really distasteful joke made right after mm. that we edited it out. But when when we were when I was editing that while we were flying to California, like I just I was dying laughing and rhino was sitting right across the aisle for me and I was like, this is so funny <laughs> because you know what i'm allowed to dislike bad humor every now and then wait no like you're bad allowed humor. to like you <laughs> uh yeah so that that was one of them i don't remember what the other one is but it's all fine it's all good um yeah big fire big happy Maybe. We haven't eaten there yet. Uh, we're, we're recording this intro the day before. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, in terms of that news, too, you're going to say, well, why didn't you talk about that new Halloween Horror Nights announcement? Because they're not on our schedule, unfortunately. Yeah, they like to let us know. They're like, okay, they usually record this on a Tuesday around this time, release around yeah. this time. We're so not even 100% positive it happened. Yeah. They just they released a tweet that alluded to the fact that they were getting ready to put out a new Halloween Horror Nights announcement. So it probably happened. And I say bully to that if it does happen because that gives us an episode next week where I don't have to I don't have to stress what we're going to talk about because I I lose sleep every night over this show. I promise that. So uh, I'm not going to beat around the bush anymore. I'm not going to keep you waiting. I know you're all eager and anticipating our thoughts and feelings on Big Fire. So uh, this would be the perfect place if we had Take Us to the Parks theme music right now because we are going to head over to Universal City Walk right now for Big Fire. We have made it here to Universal City Walk. Mm-hmm. We're right in front of Hungry Big Fire. And yeah, we are. We're big both fire, big hungry. We're both big hungry today, so hopefully we'll leave big happy. Only way to find out if that's happening, we're going in there. So let's truck it. sitting down here inside big fire got seated right away with no issues at all and actually everything's just been moving very quickly uh, because there's no one in here right now it's still like peak part time so uh, we kind of have the place to ourselves but uh, we we started off our meal here by ordering two appetizers uh, the first thing that I'm gonna try that we did get is the earth oven baked bread this is four dollars you get like four slices of bread then you get peach preserves with it, herbed butter, and whipped butter. So I'm gonna start with the peach preserves. Mm. How do I feel about peach? I mean, peach works. What's the bread? Like? What's the bread? Bread's it's a white exactly. bread. It's a white bread. 
No, no, no. It's definitely an artisanal baked bread. I'm not sure exactly of what varietal, but... Uh, the crust have flavor? Oh, yeah, no, the crust has flavor, and it's nice. It's exactly how you'd want it to be. It's very crispy on the outside. I mean, it's it's fallen, but it's flaky, as you can also see, too. It's, um, it's a good bread. It's a really good bread. I, I enjoy the bread. I love bread. I, I do love bread. So I'm going to have it with the herbed butter now. Herb Erlinger butter? Herb Erlinger. Okay. I'm feeling the herb butter. You know, it's like, it's not for sand level herbiness, but it's it's a good amount. Uh, enough to just add a little extra zing to the bread. And now, the regular. Oh, look at that crunch. Yeah. Like I said, crunchy on the outside, soft on the inside. That's kind of great. Okay. The whipped butter is whipped butter, but I'm really feeling the herb butter. I need to sit with the peach preserves. I'm going to let you try it, though. Okay. All right, I'm starting with the peach. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to feel about the peach. Not a big, uh, I don't they're not as sweet as I thought they were going to be, but... The preserves, that is. They're mm. not as sweet. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. I thought it was going to be very sugary because it's preserved, but... Not overly sweet or anything. Not my thing, though. The one thing was an F. I don't know why, I just don't. I'm not into jams as much. Jams. They're not my jam. Yeah, jams aren't your jam. Took Even the words jam. right out of my mouth. Um, I'm gonna save herb butter for last. Herb yeah. Herb yeah. herb That's the right call. Oh yeah, hear that crunch. Mm -hmm. The, the whipped butter's fine. It's butter, like you said. Nice and whipped and soft. You have to do it all with a spoon, which was interesting, but this does feel like it was made right here. It's got that nice crispy outside, like you said, flaky on the inside. And the crust has some of that that um, smoked flavor to it almost. But but there's not, not much to the herb butter. It's just butter, you know? I'm not getting a lot from the herb butter either, to be honest with you. It's a, it's a hint of herbs, definitely. It's not it's not herbalicious. Too delicious. Um, I would definitely go with this one anyway, so too, because it's not overpowering or anything. But the bread's real good. I do like a, a good bread, and this is like this is good. I can see you kind of getting through this and then being like, "Whoops, can we have another, please, sir? Can I have some more?" Um, What's next? Well, they can't be on a menu and I not order them because my mom made me watch the movie all the time when I was a kid. Fried green tomatoes. So, um... Yeah, you're blind. You're going to need I'm going to read it. <laughs> Fried green tomatoes. It comes with some burrata. Um, That's or, mozzarella. Mm -hmm. Arugula. Walnut pesto. So this would have been a no for Kylie. Um... White balsamic and some smoked salt. You know, I don't think that I have ever had fried green tomatoes with burrata cheese. With cheese, period. I've had them with like salami or something before. Not salami. Um, what's that really thin cut meat that's kind of salty? Prosciutto? Prosciutto. I've had Serrano it with prosciutto ham? before. Yeah, maybe one of the two of them, but. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a little bit of the cheese. Oh, that looks, that is some good. I hate this description, but that is some milky burrata right there. That is milky. Oh, look at her. That's a Stay puff marshmallow, man, if I've ever seen it. All right, so I'm just going to try and get a bite of the, all, the whole business here, as I like to call it. My nickname, the whole business. Terrible nickname. Okay. The burrata is probably, and not to sound like one of these people, but we did go to Italy last year. This is probably the best burrata I've had since we were in Italy. I'm not gonna lie to you, I would come back just for the burrata. With that said though, I don't know how I feel about this fried bean tomato. It is very sweet. And I did not expect that. I, and I know green tomatoes are usually a little bit more sweet, but 
this is the sweetest fried grain tomato I've ever had. I was kind of expecting it to be more like um, like the seasoning you would have on like a catfish or something like that, like spice, some sort like of spice. A Cajun to it. seasoning. Yeah, 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 like Cajun seasoning or something. But I'm, I'm gonna let you try and let let me. I don't hate it. It's not my favorite area. It's not a badly made one, but you'll probably be able to describe this better. Let, let me let you try some of it. I do have a big chunk of burrata on my fried green tomato. I'm not sure if you ate it all together as one thing. I, I don't did, remember. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad to know you paid attention for what literally happened 30 seconds ago. The problem was I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I heard what you said, sure, not sure, sure. how you did it. But, okay. Eat it separately now. You know, I'm right there with you. I really do love the burrata itself. It is good, milky mozzarella. And it's like um, cool and chill. It is really nice. And then with the walnut pesto and the sea salt on there, it's really lovely. Uh, that's that's really good. I wish I had a tomato, to be honest, so we could just make a whole thing of it. A regular tomato. I get what they were going for now that I just said that out loud, though. Yeah, and I'm kind you know of right there it's with like you. Sweet? Yeah, it's well, it's it's almost as if it's not even a green tomato. Like it looks more like the tomato. I mean, I've only made fried green tomatoes a couple times. Like this is pretty much at the point where I think it's past the green side to it. It's more like a it's like it's, yellow, yeah, yeah, yeah. oranges. So maybe that's kind of what's causing it. Eh. It's not a bad tomato. It's a firm tomato. Yeah, no, it's a firm tomato. Uh, for the most part, the, the coating is staying on there. There's nothing really happening with the coating, though. It's like a basic... It's funny you said you wanted, like, a Cajun seasoning. This is kind of like a when I get catfish some places, and it's fried catfish. It's the same crappy coating on there if it's fried. Like, so I'm not wild about that. Um, but it is staying on for the most part. It's honestly something I wouldn't get again. No. At $9, it's it's not terrible. It's not overpriced, but... How much was the bread? The bread was $4. Yeah. This is $9. And for $9, I'm not going to try this again. I'll, I'll move on to something else next time. But that's it for our appetizers. I'm not sure if we're going to do drinks next or if we're going to do entrees, but we'll just have to see. Hello there. I got the classic old fashioned. Basically, we're going with things that have boxes around them this, this evening. Um, it's the classic old fashioned with uh, Big, Big Flyer. Big Flyer Select Barrel Woodford Reserve. I figured it was a good thing to try since it's, it's something that they specifically make for them here. I wanted to give it a try. I find that I like old fashions. I enjoy the ones that. Um, Twosome. Twosome. Uh, but I know those are sweeter and not classic because they're made with chocolate whiskey and. A various of a accoutrement, but um, oh, this one smells real nice, and I love that that cherry in there. You feel like a classy lady drinking that, don't you? Oh god, the classiest. Ah, more like Don Draper. It's good. It, it's the, for me, it's the right amount of smoky and sweetness, like not too sweet. Um, but like the smokiness is very present in this um, Woodford Reserve. Um, but then, like you know, I'm kind of a little bit of a baby, so um, that like orange cherry kind of cuts through it just the right amount for me. That this is a really nice sipping drink. Um, I'll be curious to see how your yours is though. As Rhino said, we're only going with stuff with boxes around it. So he went with the old fashioned. I decided to go with actually one of my favorite drinks, a Manhattan, the classic Manhattan, and that's made again with the Big Far Select Barrel Woodford Reserve and Sweet Vermouth. So made exactly how you would expect a Manhattan to be made, with the uh, the cherry right in the bottom. So very classy drink. I feel like uh, I feel like I'm back at a classy establishment drinking uh, all things class. And you know when you describe class. it like that, you belong there. See what I? Mm, that's good. Um, 
Yeah, the Woodford is nice. I told myself that I was gonna come here and just get a pour of the Woodford without anything else in it. I still need to do that. So I realized it after I ordered my drink. So we'll get there, but uh, it's, um, you know, it's nice. It's got, it's got just a subtle hint of smokiness with then, uh, and then the one thing I'm happy about is that the sweet vermouth is not overpowering. Uh, you know, if, if you have a Manhattan with too much sweet vermouth, it's like, yeah, you, you feel like you just kind of get that like dry mouth almost in a way. <laughs> Why do some old people drink this by itself and without mixing it in with something? Uh, so it's really balanced. That's that was the long way of saying that. I'm, <laughs> You know, the fourteen and a half dollars. It's a pricey cocktail, but you know, well, it's not the priciest one. Yeah, though. it's not the priciest one. They make one uh, with Van Winkle, uh, and Rip Van Winkle, and that's a hundred twenty dollars. So, uh, it, fourteen and a half looks a lot better compared to that. But uh, no, it's uh, it's it's uh, you know. If I had a steak in front of me right now, I'd be in heaven. And with a little bit of movie magic here, our entrees have magically appeared in front of us. And I'm going to go first here because I'm the man holding the knife. That's not uh, intimidating. This I guess it's a knife. This is a knife. <laughs> that's is a knife. that's not a knife. That's a knife. Uh, is yeah, big fire American and Australian fare. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, I got the signature bison burger, one of the signature items here. Yeah. And this includes uh, obviously a bison burger. I got mine cooked medium. It has it's topped with a red wine aioli, caramelized onion, and beer cheese sauce. Uh, the the red wine aioli actually it comes out looking purple. Oh yeah, fun story. Uh, but this is uh, it comes with one side for sixteen dollars. I chose for the side the pork belly mac and cheese. But Rhino and I are actually splitting it, so I'm cutting into it right now. Sorry for just going so sloppy on that top bun there, baby. But Sloppy top, you heard it here first. Know, I want to make sure it stays intact. It's branded, big fire on top, in case you forgot where you were eating. Lucky butt. So, in terms of the temperature on the inside, Ooh, real you know, meat. It actually looks pretty close to medium. It might be closer to medium well, but it has been sitting here for about three minutes or so while we took photos and such. But it's never, also about the taste. I never know, is bison one of those meats that you're supposed to cook less or cook more because it's usually a little gamier, right? Bison not gamey, bison lean. Oh, it's lean. Bison good. Bison lean. Bison. Uh, good to cave, man. Yeah. In fact, a lot of bison I've had, because it's so lean, they have to make up for it with other flavors. And that's absolutely what's happening in this. And it is cooked perfectly, uh, as I keep biting in here. But honestly, it does taste like it's a bison burger topped with a beer cheese soup. Like the beer cheese is really sticking out for me. Uh, it's adding a very nice salty savoriness to it, but then that red wine uh, aioli and the caramelized onions on there, those are bringing the sweet on there. So this really is a dance of flavors. Um, there's one small tiny piece of lettuce on the bottom oh. here. The only issue I have with that is I could use something crunchy with this burger. That's the only thing that's really missing, and yeah, I'm picking it up. Fried onions. Not even fried onions, per se. Mm. That was one of the most disgusting things I've ever done. Maybe just regular onions. You know, like... Yeah, just something. It needed onions. something crisp, or more pieces of lettuce. That yeah. would have... Like, it just... That's my only complaint with it. Flavor-wise, I am loving it. I just needed something crispy on it. It's a, it's a nice soft burger, but... Pork belly mac and cheese, I'll be honest. I'm very disappointed with the size of this side. This is tiny. Uh, you know, it's the amount of mac and cheese that's probably healthy for me in my life, but it's not for an American fair place. Even though this is American, I feel like done a little bit more elevated. It should have those same ridiculous portion sizes. It's not giving you that big happy. 
I don't see the pork belly. Pork belly is oh, just these see little tiny yeah. small pieces on there. You probably can't see it, but it's not big thick one. It's more like a mac and cheese and bacon. I think they're using the same cheese as the beer cheese uh, that's on the burger. So, which it, it's good. It, um, you know, it doesn't, I don't want to say smoky, maybe a little bit of like a tanginess in it. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely a little bit earthy, kind of like has that Gouda style to it. Um, it's good. Breadcrumbs on top add that, that nice little texture, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna let you dig in though and give it a whirl. I couldn't see it in the video, but I can see it now. The pink part in here, like it's pink right there through the middle. I yeah. just saw one color when I was looking through the lens, but it, so now I see what you're saying. But mmm. You definitely get a very, not overly sweet, but that sweet kick from the, from the, the um, red wine sauce in there. Um, it's like, it reminds me almost of like a pickled onion. You know, you know yeah. what I'm talking about? You know, bit, like that yeah. little kick that you would get from something like that. And then that beer cheese is very present in there. Not annoyingly present, but at this point it feels like a little bit of a weird texture choice because it's a little grainy, but... But this is very tasty. And the meat is very tender. The meat's good. Mm -hmm. Good meat. And the bun's really holding up pretty well, too. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, a nice barouche bun. Yeah, a barouche. I enjoy this. Well, I know you enjoy that, but why don't you try your dish? Oh, no, sorry, the mac no, and cheese. No, I'm trying the mac and cheese. Excuse you. Mac and cheese is okay. It's not the best, it's not my least favorite. It's just kind of very thick at this point, and yeah. I, I feel like it was maybe because we were sitting here, but. No, I, I just, it's not impressive. So my my dish, my actual dish is um, the beer glazed scallops. So these are $25, but they're big fire smoked amber. Uh, they're made with the big fire smoked amber, which is the beer that they have here. And then uh, some fire grilled vegetables and charred hearth bread, which was the bread we had to begin with. And it's right on top here, nice and crispy. Ooh, extra crispy. This is like, this is hard <laughs> at this point. Because I was a little worried for a second, because I was like, oh, it's gonna get real soft. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I have to physically work at this. I have no upper body strength, so. Um, but I thought maybe this was gonna be like two big scallops, but it is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is a lot of scallops, a little potato in there. Um, and then uh, our server um, said there was bacon in this as well, which isn't reflected on the menu, but I appreciated him letting me know that. So I'm gonna dip this bread first because I'm curious just to taste the sauce. Our cheese is so hard. Needed it to soak a little while longer? I sure did. Don't leave that there. Yeah, let it there, soak it up. I'm going in deep to the scallop. Scallop, I'm gonna get one of these like, uh, what is this, a pepper maybe? This isn't like the typical thing I would order. I mean, I like scallops, but here we go. I'm just gonna do this guy. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen you order scallops. I've seen you eat them, but not actually order them yourself. Mm. This is pretty good then. Well, it's one of those things where like, I, coming from Massachusetts, it's one of those things that could be like at a barbecue and like everybody makes them, so they're all different types and qualities, and so, when we're like in the center of a state that isn't near the ocean, I mean, it's kind of near the ocean, but it's not the same for me here, but um, these are pretty good. Sometimes they can be a little chewy, but these are actually pretty nicely cooked, and I, I like this sauce. It's not like super, oh, I think it's a zucchini. That's a nice piece of zucchini there. Yeah. Crunchy? Mm-hmm. Honestly, like the zucchini, and I'm sure the potato is going to do the same thing, give it a nice texture, like mix, and then the sauce, what I like about the sauce is it's not like, like a red sauce, it's like kind of a broth, so it's not, it, it's, it's not, heavy. not heavy, yeah, it, it's a little bit lighter, but um, I, I'm, I'd be curious to get your thoughts on this, too. Well, you also um, have one more side to dig into. Oh, I do, you're right, I forgot I got this, let me just eat the rest of this little scallop. Nom, 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 nom. Mm. Soup to low. Uh, so, I also ordered a side for 
They're five dollars each, all the sides here. I got the crispy smashed potatoes. Okay. I thought they were gonna be smashed potatoes or like mashed potatoes, but they're essentially just fingerling potatoes. So they came and I was kind of sad about my choice. I was like, why did I get this? We didn't need to do this. They're just potatoes. I but They are crispy. They have a nice crisp to the skin, and they're very well seasoned on the outside. So they're not terrible. I just was expecting like mashed potatoes on this table. So, um, but not not like terrible. I don't know. I feel like I feel like the potatoes are the better. Like if mac and cheese is also on here, your side, and I feel like the potato, I'm getting more of that for the same amount of money. You know, um, but. Here, try all this before it gets too lukewarm. Well, I learned from Rhino's mistake and I started pre-soaking my bread. <laughs> oh, I like. Oh, yeah, I love the flavor of this broth. Is that potatoes? What is that? I don't even know what's in there. Oh, is that your bread? Mm -hmm. Credit card, you got it, baby. <laughs> No. Okay. Let me get in here. Get some of these peppers. Yeah, I like the variety of vegetables in here. I see a carrot, the pepper, like you said. I'm going to cut the top of the pepper off, though. Leave that as a present for you later. Ooh. I'm joking. I'll probably end up eating it, too. I'm really weird about that. See, I'm going to have to eat it. Oh, golly. Now you have to eat that, too. You just put your hand all over it. No, oh, don't put it on the table. Pick it up later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, this is a. Uh, you're you're absolutely right on the money with uh, how this scallops cooked. Uh, it, it's just done perfectly. I was concerned because when it got delivered to the table, I didn't see like a nice sear on top of it. Yeah. It all kind of just looked like the same color. And so I got very concerned that uh, that it wasn't going to be cooked well, but it, it actually really is. Um, no complaints, not chewy at all. Very good quality. That's just the, really surprising. Yeah, and the bread being as hard as it is, is really actually a really nice compliment. 100%. And I think one of the most surprising parts to it is the bacon really isn't standing out for me, despite the fact that I'm going to have another like little bite here, not of the scallop, but... You can have another scallop. Oh, I'm going to have another scallop. Okay, I was going to say there's like eight of them in there. Yeah, the bacon's just... It's not overpowered. It's just... It adds a little bit of saltiness, but that's about it. Um, and I'm really surprised. I, When I was here for the preview, I did have the smoked amber that's made specifically for this restaurant. And when I had it, you know, I... I'm not a huge fan of smoked ambers. I, it's not the first one I've had. I like smoky whiskey and stuff. I don't like smoky beers. Just a different, uh, just a different flavor that's not too great for me. But I don't even really taste the beer in here. I know it's gonna cook out, but I thought the smoky flavor would still come through. No. It really didn't come through that much. You know, at 25 bucks, I was kind of worried that you're going to get ripped off on this thing, but I think I actually prefer it between our two dishes. It's, it's plentiful. It is. It's hearty. As for the smashed potatoes, in my household, smashed potatoes were when my mom would make a baked potato, but then I didn't want to eat it, so she would smash it all down on the plate with a fork. <laughs> on your face. <laughs> Sauce on my face? No, I thought you would smash it on your face no, 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 because no, no, you're no. an ungrateful smash little Smash it on the plate. Okay. Um, well, that's what I thought. It was like it was like, yeah. like mashed potatoes, but with the chunks in it. Well, that's a, it wasn't even mashed potatoes. Baked potatoes, smashed down, and then peel the skin off. I've grown up a lot since I was 18. You leave the skin on. <laughs> I, leave the, I leave the skin on now. Um, they're crispy, well-seasoned. You get a lot of potatoes out of there. I don't know if anyone needs that much starch. But I prefer it as a side to the mac and cheese. So I think we're going to continue eating. And we'll share more later. Yeah. 
for dessert, we obviously had to go with what I thought was the choo-choo onion. And it is, in fact, baked Alaska. A big, giant... I, I don't... I've never had baked Alaska, so I actually don't know what it is. The description on the menu is huckleberry ice cream... Oh, it's meringue. Meringue. Thank meringue. you. I, I knew the word. Um, torch table down. side. It says it right there. I'm just an idiot and don't read. $9. I'm going in. I don't know if you wanted to get a, a little picture here on the inside. There's some chocolate in there, or what looks like chocolate. I see That's that. probably the huckleberry. No, no, no. I see the huckleberry, and then underneath. There's also chocolate? Yeah, and then there's this, like, there's a cake before the meringue. This is this thing is an enigma. It's a layered dessert. It's like an ogre. It's got layers. Oh, you don't like it at I don't know. I don't think I do. Um, the huckleberry ice cream is is good. But I think the chocolate is very bitter. Um, and I like the cake. And I also had this weird sensation where I thought part of it was going to be warm now, too, because they lit it on fire. But that's just for show. The cake's good. It's all good. It's just a preference thing. Um... I don't know. I don't know what the bitter part, I don't even know if it's bitter. It might be whatever they like lit this on fire with. I don't know. I don't think I like it. I'm gonna, you try it. I don't know if I like it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We all know my feelings on a mixture of chocolate and fruit, so this could bode, uh, this could bode weird results for me. It's not a lot of chocolate. Show me. Show me. Show me. Show me your spoon. Show me. Hold on. I don't think I got any on this one. No, okay. You got to get like uh, over there. Oh, wait. No. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only, it's a little layer. A little layer. It's very bitter. Something's very bitter. I don't know. Listen, it doesn't matter. It might be the liquid. I don't know. It doesn't matter because the only thing people are going to take away from this is the fact that we don't know that a baked Alaska is topped with meringue. It's a, they're gonna, they've already shut it off at it's this point. It's barely any meringue, though. That's mostly cake. I thought we were going to dive into this meringue pillow. So I'm not morally opposed to it like you are. Um, I was, I guess I was hoping the huckleberry would maybe stick out a little bit more. But you, you get that flavor I'm talking about, right? There's something in there It's like, I don't even know if it's bitter or if that was alcohol they put on top of it to burn it. But it doesn't say anything about it. I'm going to deconstruct this get, a little bit more. Get some of just the chocolate. Get some of just the chocolate. I, I mean, the chocolate... Yeah, that doesn't really bother me that much. I, it's, it's not. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't. I don't dislike it. This will. I will never get this again no. unless maybe Kylie wants it. You know she's gonna want to share the s'mores with you, but she can't get it because it's got peanut butter on it. No, she would actually like this. She likes. She likes huckleberries. I think the problem for me is I've had baked Alaska twice, like the one ginormous one that they had at Boathouse. And then there was one that they used to have at Steakhouse 55 way back when, where it was a root beer Ooh. one, and that was like the bee's knees of baked yeah, Alaska. But was that like all meringue? Like, because those ones are tall. That was the tall one, the Boathouse one. The Boathouse one, that was, was that like, like a big like, monster. Yeah, there, but that was meringue, right? There wasn't a, like cake? Always one like, like there's always the same, there's going to be ice cream in it, there's going to be cake, there's going to be other layers, meringue <laughs> Music. It's definitely no choo choo onion. We are wrapped up with our meal before we start hashing it all out. I do want to point out that I did end up trying just a single pour of the Big Fire Select Woodford Reserve bourbon and it was good. Uh, it's very similar to just if you go out and buy a any bottle of Woodford, but... Is it um, extra smoky? I didn't really get any 
any true signature uh, flavor to it. In fact, I think actually the the mixed drinks that they make with it help bring out a lot of the intricacies of the bourbon a little bit more. So that was kind of odd, but you know what? I enjoyed it, but let's run down the list of everything. And uh, we'll just recap with our food first and foremost here. Oh yeah, if, I mean to yawn. Sorry, yeah. if we can if we can have Rhino's attention belly. Yeah. for a couple minutes, maybe we can go over everything. <laughs> uh, so, what are final thoughts on food? Um, pretty good. I I, I think um, I I didn't I didn't dislike anything. I mean, the dessert was not my favorite, but it was just because there was this bitter aftertaste that didn't agree with me, and that's just a personal selection. As far as the dessert goes, I thought it was good dessert. You know. I just, it wasn't a choice that I'll have again. I would get, maybe try something else. There was a bourbon ice cream that you talked about, something in there. Yeah, it's with a that. Cho flourless chocolate cake with bourbon ice cream on top. Um, my scallops were pretty, they were like excellently made, really good, really well cooked. They weren't super heavy, but I feel like I also only ate half of it. So if you were eating the full thing, it was a lot of food actually, I yeah. think. So that, that was a pretty hefty dish, I, I think. Um, and I enjoyed the bison burger a lot too. Um, and I think the only thing where I'd be like, no, for sure, I wouldn't recommend the, um, the fried, fried green, green tomatoes. tomatoes no. yeah. In yeah. fact, one of the burgers that I was most interested in was the fried green tomato burger that was then topped with pimento cheese. But based on the taste of our fried green tomato yeah. appetizer, I don't think I'll come back for that. Uh, and you know, I thought the food was good. I thought the scallops were great. I thought the dessert was good. Uh, this isn't, the food didn't leave me like wanting to rush to come back here. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, we talk about big happy. I feel like I've got a little happy. I'm, wait a minute. I feel like, you know what I mean. I'm satisfied. I didn't dislike it. Yeah. If somebody was like, oh, we're going to go to dinner here. Do you want to join us? I'd be like, okay, sure. Yeah. But it's like, you put it, you said it when we were sitting inside that you feel like it's a it's a great building, but it doesn't get the respect it deserves from the yep. clientele, maybe? Uh, no, no, no. Or I did not say that. The clothing? Let's, the clothing? Uh, so we'll talk about the decor inside real quickly here. A big open restaurant within these weird kind of like small seating sections yeah, throughout. Yeah. Uh, and then an upstairs seating section as well, too, that's a little cramped up there. Um, it's... It's a big restaurant. It can hold a lot of people, and it is heavily, heavily focused on woods and like natural materials. So I love the vibe. It's it's still daytime right now, so like it's you know it's it's pretty outside. I think it, it'll be real classy at night. Exactly. Yeah. Go into the transition at night. I feel like this is a date restaurant. This yeah. is a place where when they get all the fires glowing outside and and you, you the twinkling lights and yeah. everything, I think it'll like give it an extra well, pop. It it replaced Emeralds, which was like the go to date place here. Um, I feel like it's now a split between. Big Fire in Vivo is like probably the most oh, yeah. romantic of the places. If you're looking for that date night, families can obviously still come in and have a good time. It's not. Um, it's it's not an alienating atmosphere. No, I think whatever your mode is, whether you are leaving the theme park and you're like, oh, I want to get food and I wanted to try this, don't feel like you can't come here. But but also if you wanted to like, you know, just put on a pair of pants. Well, I guess we're all wearing pants, but you know what I mean and a button down and like go somewhere that you're like, oh, we'll kind of have a nice date, not like yeah. necessarily fancy dinner, but like, you know, a pretty nice, respectable yeah. dinner. You could come here that's, too. That's what I meant when Rhino tried to say clientele. I meant more or less the way that the, the vibe of the restaurant, the, the feeling that I get when I'm inside there, it's definitely, it, it should be a more elevated experience. It should be a restaurant where I feel like you have to dress up to go inside, not just park casual. I mean, but then again, it's kind of very similar to like a Longhorn on the inside as well, yeah, too. I can see that. And I you don't need that. to dress up to go to Longhorn, obviously. If you do, but more you power yeah, to you. And if but, you do, I feel like you won't feel out of place necessarily yeah. either. It, people won't be looking and be like, why are these people dressed up in yeah. here? Yeah, I. but with this one, I feel like it would really take the entire experience to the next level if it was more of a place that was a more of a to-do where you do yeah. get a little bit better dressed up and it, you come it, in here and eat. It was good enough that there are a couple more items on the menu that I am interested in trying yeah. that I would come back for, but it's not, it's not something 
I don't know that this will be the thing where I always go. Yeah. Like my, my go-to at City Walk oftentimes is NBC, but it's because it has a lot of options and it's elevated bar food. Yeah. You know, and that's not, I don't want this type of food all the time necessarily. So when they say it's American fare, I don't want you to think it's not like, some people think, oh, well that's just basic food. It's not, no. it's, it's good food, you know? Yeah, no, it's uh, where the price points at with it, you know, being, Considering most of the food items, you're looking at over $20 for it, unless you go with the sandwiches and stuff. You know, it, it's a place where, like what Rhino just said, it's not gonna be my go-to here. I've got other places that I feel like more align with my price range yeah, uh, and give me better options for what I want. But if I'm looking for that like one special meal, like maybe a special one every six months at once a year, something like that, I'll be back for Big Fire for that. But I'll also be back to see if I like it more the next time around with some different choices. But, you know, it's it was good. It wasn't, it didn't blow us away. Yeah, yeah not blown away. But I don't want to deter anybody from coming or anything yeah. like that. No, yeah. it's absolutely it's something some you should try. It's not some way we wouldn't not recommend, yeah. if that makes sense. Like yeah, I yeah. tell people to, but just, you know, it's be prepared that you might walk away saying it was a little bit expensive for what I got or... Yeah. It didn't have the, the food options but, that I wanted. But I do think a nice addition. Yeah. Nice addition. It is an addition they needed. Yeah. After, after closing down Emeralds, they needed this type of restaurant to return. So now between this, Vivo, I feel like City Walk is once again balanced yeah. with their restaurant choices. So that's it for Big Fire. That's it. So we're going to send it back to Craig and Rhino in the studio. We'll see you then. Rhino. We came, we saw, we, we conquered. Oh. We happy. <laughs> well, I don't know if we're happy, but yeah. We are We are moderately satisfied with our experience. I told you not to get the cauliflower steak. I don't know that that's what I got. I know. It's, it's probably not what you got. And of course, we're just joking here. Uh, as I said before, we cut to there. Uh, this, was, this was recorded right before, the day before we actually went to Big Fire. So uh, let's just... <laughs> God, you know what I'm really hoping in all this that I didn't think about, but City Walk has occasionally has the issue of shutting down like an entire section for a private party and the rest that we've actually run into that once before where we were going oh, to review yeah. a restaurant and it was closed for a private party. So I'm hoping that that didn't happen with this. Otherwise, it's a terrible, terrible episode. Just really bad content. Or I just skipped the week and I said something like we had the flu. Maybe. I don't know. Anyways, uh, very good. It was always fun. Always love those in the park segments. But now, here's the point that if we had a theme song for it, we would switch over to our questions. Nothing but questions. No, that's... I, 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 I mean, I mean, we can have words questions, in it. Questions. I feel like it would just do better without questions. And I, I think I actually leapt in that awkward pause there because I was thinking in my head that it was going to cut to the music. Kind of like when we record the intros and stuff, I don't have the music going in live. Oh, I, so see, I, I have to leave gonna, hard pauses. You're going to play it like just under what we were doing. So you'd be like, time for the questions. Questions! Then you'd be ready to read a question. It's like a two second thing. Oh, you're thinking two seconds. See, you, I was. You're, you're going to make it like a. I was thinking graphic? like a. Yeah, I was thinking like a 10 second cutaway graphic to where it's like all these questions are floating up in the air. And questions. Like, um, how did this get made? Like when they get to their reading the thing, they have a separate theme song, don't they? Later in the show, oh. other opinions. They had the. They oh, yeah. kept no. changing the theme for other opinions. Well, that's uh, all. That's that's one of the shows that that inspired us to reach out to get other people to to help make us themes and stuff. They do it with their mini sods, and they do it with, uh, with their um with with their normal show with all the different music that people submit and stuff so but yeah questions i'm thinking like 10 seconds cut away to see all these like question marks question around marks, and, question marks question yeah, marks yeah yeah there you go now you're getting like, into it it should be like pyramids yeah you know what are other mysteries in the world do aliens pyramids? exist oh yeah ufo head alien <laughs> head pyramid bigfoot Will those crazy people successfully get into Area 51, led by Chris Pratt, I believe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a question. No, that was that was our first question, actually, in fact. And the answer is we don't know. Uh, kidding, kidding. No. Uh, our first question actually is going to come from Stacy Reg. And Stacy says, hey, Craig and Rhino. She spelled Rhino wrong, but we're not going to hold that it's against cool. her. She spelled like the animal? Mm, well, the mixture of the animal and how you spell. 
Oh, so the, it's like R H Y N O. Yeah. Oh, no. Very creative. It's fine. We're. Your question is still valid, despite uh, the, your spelling errors. Uh, Stacy says, staying here in September. Any thoughts on Halloween Horror Nights in early September, Friday and Saturday? You think an express pass is a must if we're going to go those two nights? Can we get it all in without spending extra money on express passes? Thanks. In early September? Early September, Friday and Saturday. I'm not quite sure if she meant Friday and Saturday or Friday or Saturday. Mm. Or Friday I think and Friday. Or Saturday. So it, it, Saturday is the day where it's like that's the day. That's a busy day. I always say if if it's ever an option to go during the week, go during the week on a Wednesday or a Thursday or something. But I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I, early September. I lately the, the last like year. Last year it was like busy all the time. Yeah, and I mean towards the the first couple weeks, I think with a good strategy, with like a stay and scream strategy, yeah. you can definitely accomplish a lot. And then uh, we've talked about it before. If you really kind of found yourself in a bind where you were missing out on stuff that you need to do, and you want to get it all in, of course they, uh, you know, you can jump on that VIP tour and do a, a half night tour for a discounted price. Yeah. And they do offer the um, express for a discounted price yeah. after a certain time too, as well. So if you feel like you're getting toward a part of the night where you're like, I am not getting this done, you can find out when that time is, and it'll be like half off. I think sometimes. I, I think it. it I think it changes, but I'm pretty sure it was like half off. And that's assuming that Express isn't already sold out. And that's also oh, assuming point, the point. VIP tours aren't already all sold out, which they have the ability to do. These things sell out. There are no longer options for it. Uh, if if you're talking one night, I'm, I'm really at the point now where uh, I, I've been struggling with this because I've been working on buying my, uh, my Halloween Horror Nights uh, – my frequent fear pass and i think i'm finally at the point where i i just can't see a way around not getting express added onto it i know that most of my friends that i'm going to be going with and such aren't going to have express uh because the the price difference i think with the florida resident annual a lot. discount yeah the florida resident frequent fear plus frequent fear pass is like 115 dollars, but then to add on express and that's the pass where you uh you don't get fridays involved just the sunday through thursdays in the first two weeks in there uh that pass is like it's 115 i think right around that 120 but then with express it's like 360 so it's like a big jump and then uh the the frequent fear plus that i would normally get this year it's not going on it doesn't have a florida resident or annual pass discount for it um it's just uh it's just what it is and oh. i want to do this character dining this year by the way yeah we, we need to add that to the list of things to do we well, always we talk, you t they were talking about how to not spend money and you're going over the, i'm trying to find the price but yeah. i went by the be behind the screams and masking the horror d uh, tour which they do during the day and then this character dining experience, I'm like, there is a yeah. lot going on here that we don't do. There is a lot I'm going on. I'm trying to find there. the yeah. price of that pass, though. But uh, you'd have to look in the tickets. I was, I thought I was in the. No, I was looking no, for the annual pass. On yeah, the well, I think you're still in the event extra, so you're looking at express pass prices right now. Jeez. You would want to go in the one that says event tickets. Tickets? Tickets? Is it where it says <laughs> tickets? Tickets? <laughs> tickets? Tickets? Um. See, then you have to click on there, and it'll take you to the engine where you can buy the tickets. Yeah, but I want to see how much my pass is, the one you're talking about. I was trying to compare the price of, like, where it, the multi, whatever. Yeah, you're, you're getting there. Tonight. You're getting okay. there. Okay. So, slowly. Oh, oh okay. Okay, so I see. Rush of Fear. Rush of Fear pass. So, a Rush of Fear pass would mm -hmm. be $109.99. 109. Yeah, and that's so the regular price, not not for annual pass holders. Yeah, discounts. regular yeah. regular price, and then uh, with Express, it's three hundred and thirty five dollars. Mm -hmm. That like that is makes the ticket three times the amount of money it was. Mm -hmm. It's insane to me. Um, but then the Halloween Horror Nights Frequent Fear Pass is like one hundred and twenty dollars, and then with the uh, with the Express is three seventy four. And then the Frequent Fear Plus is 140 and then with, sweet baby, with the Express, it's $460. Yeah. And then the Ultimate one is two, Ultimate Frequent Fear Pass, 260 with Express, 680 Yeah. And, but there are some people yeah. that love it, love it, love it, love oh, yeah. it that much. I'm not, I'm not knocking that. If you got the money, whatever, do whatever oh, you're going to do. Oh, and arguably, I would say there's uh, not... 
not for me, but I know people who have bought like a Disney annual pass at an exorbitant price, more than $680, and they spent less days going to like Walt Disney World than they did attending, than you could if you attended all the nights of Halloween Horror Nights. And like, if you're very serious about it, even if you attend all but one night each week, you can, I, like you can get you can get a lot out of your money if you really want to pay for the most expensive of the passes. Yeah, this year only the the annual pass discounts are only on the Rush of Fear and then the Frequent Fear pass. Frequent Fear Plus, the one that was 140, that's 140 regardless of what pass you have and same goes for the every night. So, I this has now turned into the longest answer to any question because my like I said, my mindset now is I just I don't think I care to do this event. Again, without Express, I'm I, I'm very good at getting in the park to do Stay and Scream, which, of course, if you have admission for the park in the daytime, you can go into one of the frequent or the Stay and Scream spots and you can get started a little bit early. Sometimes you can knock out two, even three houses before yeah. the general public gets in. But on super busy nights, uh, which in the time period or saying early September, even on that weekend, I would say... I would say you could probably still get close to everything done with Stay and Scream involved in there without Express, but you know it's it crowds can also fluctuate and you you never know. For me, I'm at the point now in my life where even though it's more money that I, uh, I I'm not going to be able to spend, I'm. I, I think it's it's worth it for me, so I don't have to deal with the crowds. Uh, it, by the end of the event, if all is said and done, usually a lot of the times why I'm buying beer at Halloween Horror Nights and drinks are because I'm going to be waiting in lines. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, you know, of course, I'll, I'll after tip and stuff, I just spent 12 bucks on this beer, 13 bucks on this beer, but I have something to distract me while I'm waiting in line. And, you know, if I'm, if I'm on Express walking through all these lines, I'm not going to be wasting money on all those extras and stuff. So for me, it justifies. So because of that, I, I'm now at the point where I'm saying, if you can afford it, absolutely just go for it. It's, it will make your, your, evening at halloween horror night so much better the only thing i would still recommend with it you know express you only get to use that one time at each house so the only thing i would recommend in those regards is if you would decide to buy express for some reason definitely while it's still slow and if you can take advantage of stay a scream stay and scream do that do the houses while you can while they're the wait time's not bad don't use your express on those too many people are walking and using their express like right away when a house is five minutes yeah, yeah, yeah. and you can do the house, do, do as many houses as you can until it hits that wait time that you're uncomfortable with and then start using your express and do it that way. That would be my only recommendation on it. But I personally, I personally believe if you can spend, if you can afford the extra money on it, do it. If you can't, just go in with stay and scream be ready to run around be ready to wait a long time in some of the houses if you have to but i think you'll have fun regardless and the earlier you can go the better but crowds can change you know it's it's like anything is if all if you constantly say that the first two weeks are always the best time to go if you say that long enough year after year after year everyone's eventually going to start switching to that date and well think about that busier first time times. it was open after halloween and it was dead that first year yeah. so you're like oh it'll be dead and it was the worst night yeah. of the year last time exactly it's crowds just change randomly and while we want to be able to predict well uh we're also not sitting here with computers and being all nerdy about it saying well the calculations are complete i'm figuring it all out that was terrible i couldn't even keep that up halfway through <laughs> so uh next question comes from c bay 86 bye bye and c bay asked will universal drop third gate news just before disney's d23 happens next month hmm no <laughs> I don't know. I think they would they would maybe I think they would say it after. I don't they don't want their news to be swallowed up. That's the thing. It's not necessarily yeah. about competition. So I think they would just let the event pass and then they'll announce it. Yeah. I'll be honest. I think if a if we're really talking about this, I think Disney's probably the more bitter of the two when it comes to feeling like they need to one up the other place. Yeah. I that's just and that's not me hating Disney. And you can say, oh, Craig hates Disney, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I, that's clearly not the case. I love Disney, but I 
either neither one of them cares about the news cycle on that, or I think Disney probably cares about trumping Universal's news maybe a little bit more. Uh, you know, it's it's usually the people who are on top that are the ones that want to fight harder to keep everyone down. And that's just from my experience, whether it's talking about it in a metaphorical sense with this company or just like knowing people who are bullies in my life that would rather push people down uh, than than ever give up any sort of thing. I know I'm talking about Rhino. I was going to say, I'm sitting right next to you. You know how I like to bully people. No, mm. we're, we, we both know the same person I'm, I'm referring to. And it's, it's goofy in that way. But uh, just just a friend. Just a friend. He's still our friend, despite everything. Uh, or she. Dun, dun, dun. The question That'll be the question next week, probably for this show. Kyle. Who's bullying you, <laughs> Kylie? My wife. <laughs> this is me trying to talk about it in a in a safe space. But I, yeah, I, I think Universal's just going to do it when the time is right. I I don't think announcing a third gate anytime around D twenty three Expo is is good news. It's you know yes, people are paying attention and looking for theme park news, but ultimately, I feel like Disney's not. Disney knows that us nerds out here. We're we're going to consume, find and consume that news anyways. Uh, the people who are watching this show, you're you're using our website. You're using other websites out there. You're using the Universal Orlando blog. The same goes with the Disney people. They're using Disney Parks blog. They're using our site. They're using other Disney fan sites out there. Disney's aware that you're going to get the news. To them, I think they're more conscious about wanting wanting the mainstream media to get the news out there. That's why um, they, I, they also want people to plan a vacation. Yeah. And so they want to make sure you don't forget. Like, so saying it before or during that mess with a million announcements from Disney, that's not, that's not a very efficient announcement when it comes to that theme park. They want to make a lasting impression about it. I think. Yeah. Well, I completely agree with that. You don't want people to forget about wanting to go to universal because some other announcements going to come out. So it's a it's a balance there. They want they also don't want to announce it too soon and then people kind of sit there and wait and wait and wait and forget about it and plan other trips in the meantime. So but uh, I I I just think Universal cares more about and Disney for this matter, they care more about the the rest of the world finding out. They care about the greater United States, the people who don't know that we exist out there. They want those people to find out. They already know that they have us and that we're going to show up and go anyways. But it's about finding those other people and getting them to be involved. So whether it happens surrounding, you know what? It could happen surrounding D23. They could take advantage of it and say, you know what? Everyone's going to be paying attention because Disney's making all these announcements. We'll make one too because we have the world's eye. It could come on a random day at the Today Show when you don't expect it yeah. at all. And Al Roker just says, well, we've got a brand new park coming to Universal and maybe they'll put in a second Today Cafe involved too. It's I, I, I'm not sure. I just, I just know if I was making the decisions, I would not, even if we see the ground being broken and all of that, I... Things can always change. Yeah, yeah I would definitely... I once... Once they're ready to have like a good official groundbreaking ceremony, just finally go out there and confirm, yes, we have a new part coming. Everyone already knows it anyways. It's not a surprise. Just give the confirmation when... I'd like it to get far enough along that it would be a surprise to when it was supposed to be done. Yes. You'd be but, like shocked. You'd well, be like, whoa. And that's the, the problem too. I think it was even... The, I said the thing about the groundbreak, groundbreaking ceremony from what I understand, I believe months back at this point they already laid in the first foundation of what the park is going to be set up oh, I didn't um, similar in the same style to like uh the the point in islands of adventure where the sneeches meet together and that's that's the first point that was set hmm. at islands of adventure i believe it was a few months back that they set that up for the new gate coming along so it's already happened but eventually in my opinion they should do like a groundbreaking ceremony where they say okay we're now moving into high gear on this we're doing this that way everyone can say okay it is confirmed it's going to be happening and then the next announcement comes when we're looking at like a year off and then at that point it's okay this is the name of the park. This is what you're going to see in that. 
and here's when it opens. Mm-hmm. That's what I would like to see it from it. But uh, you know what? We also live in a society now where everyone's obsessed with consuming as much as they can when they can on their schedule without any apologies about it. So uh, it doesn't surprise me that people would want to be greedy and want to know everything about it mm-hmm. at every single time. Then again, that's kind of how we have jobs. So. Yeah, too dumb, touche. <laughs> yep. So, and Another that's point. that's Craig's corner for hypothetical questions and such in this episode of questions. Craig's corner. Yeah, I, I don't know how that's working out. It's just not. So. Thank you for those questions. Of course, if you want to ask us any questions to answer on the show, uh, we are going to get back to that as a normal thing now that we're kind of through all that nonsense that we went through there. So uh, you can uh, submit questions by going to the YouTube video for this show, and you can leave those questions in the comments, and we will choose a couple to read. And And we are getting closer to a question and answer episode. I know we, we've gotten that question a couple times now. We're getting closer to it. So I'll have that announcement uh, coming in the future here. But please leave us your questions so we can answer them next week. So if you need any more information on this show, head over to disunplugged.com, home of the show notes page for this show and the others on the Disunplugged podcast network. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to us on YouTube. Plus hit that bell, leave us comments, and hit that thumbs up. And if if you're listening to this on iTunes, Stitcher, or any other uh, method, go ahead, make sure you're subscribed. And if you can leave us feedback, rate us, and review us, do that too, please. So thank you so much to everyone out there for listening and watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Rhino, for being here with me. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you. And we will see you again next week with another episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. But until then, remember, we still haven't changed the name. Bye.